The following podcast contains... What the f*** is this shit? Who the f*** are you, lady? Why the f*** did you hug my head? Quite a little mouth on him, isn't there? Explicit language. Hello and welcome to the podcast that asks a simple question. When you staged your party's biggest party and none of your party came, what the hell were you thinking? I'm your host Dave Bledsoe and this is a Friday, July 15th, 2016 Convention Junction edition of the show where we talk about the Republican National Convention and what could go down at that crazy, crazy show next week. Stay tuned. The What the Hell Were You Thinking podcast is brought to you this week by Alvin's Army Surplus of Akron. Alvin specializes in all your convention needs, whether it's ponchos and backpacks to helmets and gas masks. It doesn't matter if you're a pig or a protester. Get ready for the convention at Alvin's. Ask Alvin about the Black Box Special. 20 pairs of black fatigues, 20 gas masks, and 20 pairs of leather gloves, all for $520. The grand old party protest got a lot more grand with gear from Alvin's. Alvin's, a proud sponsor of of Black Block meetups at every Republican c- convention since 1968. I scheme and plan for months and it all gets screwed up because you can't control the students. Never send a woman to do a man's job. You cocky, pointy nose little Reaganite. If you hadn't provoked them, we wouldn't be in this mess. Excuse me? Reality check here. Earth is tall, bitch. What is your fault? This is. We're dying. Hey! Poor boy. Go and have your parties with all your new friends. I can see it now, Andrews. You and all the knee-jerk, bleeding heart liberals, sipping tea and playing patty cake. And those useless hippie potheads, those commie pinko leftists, the bunny huggers, the pillow biters. Wait, which one, which one of the pillow biters? The butt pirates. Oh. And those beastly man-haters tell those chicks to shave their pits and call me. The goddamn whiny crybaby minorities. You can keep them all. Rand McPherson, everybody, just remember the 9.30 show is completely different from the 7.30 show. Enjoy the meal. Next week in Cleveland, Ohio, the Republican Party will gather together in their quadrennial convention to officially anoint their nominee for president of the United States of America. Usually, this event marks the high point of the campaign, a raucous celebration in as much as a gathering of several thousand white people from the Midwest and the South can be raucous, Teetotaling in prayer. And of course, celebrate what it truly means to be a Republican. So much hate and fear. This year, things are, um, a little different. A normal convention is a carefully staged faux event where the party gathers, engages in some meaningless votes, and sends their candidate out in the world to fight the Democrats. The whole thing is really just an excuse to get the party faithful together and thank them for their support with copious amounts of booze and prostitutes surreptitiously smuggled into their hotel rooms disguised as, quote, reporters, unquote. The RNC is also a Black Friday-level money-making opportunity for local rent boys as closeted Republicans are finally able to bear back their way into Nirvana. This year, as you might have noticed, a certain carrot-hued herpes blister topped with sort of a wispy white mold hair managed to seize the party from out from under its traditional masters and turn the National Convention into a full-blown trailer park coronation. I'm not saying the convention is more akin to the crowd I would traditionally associate with a tractor pull, but rather the Republican National Convention this year is more a people I would traditionally associate with the crowd at a state fair hog calling contest. Gavin didn't believe we needed to ran, run all 38 seconds of that drop. That's why Gavin doesn't have his own podcast. TrumpCon 2016 is far more notable for the names that will not be attending than those who will. As of this recording, no Bush will deign to grace in the quick and loans arena, meaning two former Republican presidents will be missing, along with poor Heb. I miss the idea of him. So does the Republican Party. 
The previous two nominees send their regards. That's all they're sending that day. <laughs> regards. So scratch Romney and McCain, and if a Republican senator is up for re-election this year, you can safely assume the closest they come to Cleveland will be watching a rerun of the Drew Carey show on Nick at Night. I touch myself to Drew Carey on the price is right. God. Few, if any, of Trump's primary opponents are planning on being in the hall, with the exception of Raphael Ted Cruz, who was a speaking slot, where presumably he will take the stage and encase himself in a chrysalis for the next four years in preparation for his ascension in 2020. Oh, dear God, it's the speaker's list for the convention reads less like a who's who of the GOP and more like a who the fuck are you list at an insurance convention in Topeka. I mean, I'm not that up on the roster of the current GOP, but there are names on the list that I couldn't find until the second page of Google search results. I mean, for fuck's sake, I'm on the first page of my Google, of my Google search results for my name along with some guy that got murdered in Kansas City a few years ago. But seriously, I've got a podcast. No one listens to it, but I'm still higher up on the Google than most of the speakers on this list. I mean, there's Sheriff Dave Clark. different to Dave Clark Gavin, though that is a really good pull. No, Sheriff Dave Clark is the sheriff of Milwaukee, where he ran as a Democrat, despite most definitely not being a Democrat. I mean, he's known for appearing about Milwaukee on horseback, wearing a cowboy hat. Because, you know, when I think cowboy, I definitely think Milwaukee. But Milwaukee has certainly had its share of visitors. The French missionaries and explorers were coming here as early as the late 1600s to trade with the Native Americans. In fact, isn't Milwaukee an Indian name? Yes, Pete, it is. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake, which is Algonquin for the good land. He's got a talk show on Glenn Beck's Blaze Network, was an early supporter of Trump and a vehement critic of Black Lives Matter. We're sure Sheriff Clark earned his spot because of... Uh, because of his support for Trump, and definitely not because... It's not because he's black, though, what? right? Is that racist? Is it racist to call out Republicans for putting up a token black guy? I can't keep these things straight anymore. There's Andy Wist. Who the fuck is that? I, I don't know. I'm not joking. I googled him. The only thing that I can find for him speaking at the, is that he's speaking at the convention. And I can't find out why he's speaking at the convention. The, repo the results, they're all just the Facebook and LinkedIn, which is things Google puts up when even they don't know who the fuck you're Googling. There will, of course, be a complete slate of Trump toadies on stage, this spineless sycophants who've entered Trump's orbit like a small piece of poo that swirls helplessly around the toilet bowl but never seems to slip down the drain. You finish shitting, and you flush the toilet, and wait a second, and one chunk come back. What does that chunk want? Such luminaries of the party is Mike fucking Huckabee, two-time loser who dropped out this year in February. Dr. Ben Carson, who dropped out in March. And Chris Christie, who dropped out in February only to become Trump's bitch boy. They've all glommed onto him so tightly you can see the bronzer stains on their skin and... Far more disturbingly, long strings of heavily product hair wrapped around their fingers. God. Ugh. Each of whom will take the stage and pledge their allegiance to the inflated fatuousness and hopes that we will reward them with some small nugget of his benevolence. Or in Ben Carson's case, because he's completely unaware of anything he might be saying or doing. I mean, this convention is going to be like schoolhouse rock of ass-kissing. Junction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up Trump with cronies and toadies. Conjunction, junction, how's that function? There will be, of course, a few A-list names speaking at Trump's gold-plated all-you-can-eat buffet. Paul Ryan will take the stage where he will try and thread the needle of not endorsing the nominee while looking like he is not, not, not endorsing 
the nominee. Mitch McConnell will be there and will be trying very, very hard to, to appear lifelike and sentient, though, in all honesty, this is an everyday struggle for Mitch. Lifeless eyes. Black eyes like a doll's eye. As we mentioned earlier, the flesh-clad form of Zuckerberg, known in this dimension as Ted Cruz, will also address the hall before the ritual of Hakka and his form change. We can only hope this will, this will be in a prime time slot because the slaughter of twenty-three virgin news as prescribed in the Book of Shadows should be an amazing ratings grabber. A huge swath of the speakers are from the gamut of frothing paranoid lunatics the Republican Party draws so heavily on to prop up their flagging popularity amongst the kind of people who think the condensation of airplane exhaust is a secret government plot to control their mind and make them secret Muslims. It's still real to me, damn it! (laughs) They will be trotting out all the Clinton conspiracy hits with such favorite as Benghazi. Lies! Lies inside and out! All lies! (laughs) <laughs> which I am not making this up, has a theme at night. God, I I hope they decorate the arena like a bad high school dance. Lots of posters with camels on them, some maybe some fake palm trees, and three guys in bed sheets that they're calling Bedouin robes carrying cardboard RPGs. Oh my god, it would be perfect! You're you're probably going to hear about some emails during this conspiracy thread. And that is that the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Not all of them, Bernie. Not all of them. And, and by the way, I'm sure we're going to hear classics like Whitewater, Vince Foster, and a largely forgotten track called Hillary is a Lesbian. Oh my God, you're a lesbian. She's... Actually not, but you're also going to hear the name Huma Abaden come up. And is it just me, or is it every time that I hear Huma's name comes up, I just immediately go to Dragonlance? It's me, isn't it? Gavin, you think about Dragonlance too, right? You've never read Dragonlance? You're fucking fired. You're just fucking fired. You'll never escape. The gods of light have returned to destroy you and your queen, Verminard. Look around you, half-elf. What evidence do you see that the gods of light have come back to the world? No Republican convention would be complete without representatives of the 1% of the 1%. And this year is no exception, although the richest of the rips seem to be conspicuously absent. Even the kind of douchebags who are unabashed in their self-interest in support of the GOP. This year, the big name on the rich prick supported another rich prick is, uh, of course, Peter Thiel founder of PayPal and libertarian fucktard. Teal, of course, is a perfect fit for Trump. Both men share an abiding hatred of the media, unless, of course, the media is lavishly tonguing their asshole, which is not something that we are saying Teal is literally into, but you just never know. Teal is also the worst sort of sop to the LBGT crowd I've seen a Republican give since Reagan finally managed to choke out the word AIDS seven years into the epidemic. I mean, of all the gay people in the world, they managed to find the one that most gay people would happily trade for a hetero to be named later. In the history of GOP conventions, there have been two other openly gay speakers to grace the stage, both of whom were warmly welcomed by the crowd and curb stomped backstage in a tragic case of mistaken identity that somehow happened twice, four years apart. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, sir. I know I've been a bit snarky about these speakers, and I'm about to make up for it when I tell you that it's about the sports legends who are speaking for the groin-located infected skin tag that is the nominee. Legend is kind of a strong term. Definitely some of these people are sports-related, like the head of the UFC, which was actually just sold for $4 billion or $4 million. I don't know what the fuck. Even the, yeah, or the 484th-ranked professional women's golfer, and, um, Tim Tebow. Tebow? That's your A-list sports guy? I know shit about sports ball, and even I know this guy sucks. I mean, he got cut from the Jets. That's like being on the fat kid team in dodgeball and then being told by Gavin, you're not good enough to play with him. And you know what? Then, after, after all of this, I find out 
that Tebow was never actually invited to speak for him for at the convention, and even he he was he wasn't gonna do it. I mean, fuck! What was I supposed to do? I had that good sport ball joke, which I never do, so I just left it in. And Tebow's a loser. Of course, we are missing the real stars of the show. The reason that we are gathered in Cleveland in the first place. The twelfth time the river caught fire. It was August 1969. Small one this time. The Cleveland Tourist Commission would like to point out that there has not been a fire on the Cuyahoga River since 1969. We resent the implication that Cleveland is a festering cesspool of filth and scum prior to the arrival of the Public Republican National Convention. We hope to have them safely cleaned and relocated within a week at the convention's end. Thank you. This is a message from the Greater Cleveland Tourism Bureau. No, no, the real star of the show are the Trumps themselves, and all of them will be on that stage to tell you how fucking great they are. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. In addition to the gorgeous orange crotch himself, the entire Trump family will speak. Donald Jr., Eric, Ivanka, Tiffany, Melania, Barron, Little Ray Ray of the St. Louis Trumps, Cousin Eddie Trump, who lives in the trailer behind Trump Towers, Adolph Trump, Uncle Stu, who isn't really a Trump, but always seems to be there during the holidays and no one knows who brought him, Hong Mei Trump of the Beijing Trumps, and Jesus Trump, who is not actually a Trump, but just an Italian actor. They paid 50 bucks to wear a sombrero and pretend to be Mexican so they could prove how much Trump isn't a racist because they've got a cousin who they are told is a Mexican, and that is great. The cavalcade of Trumps really sets the tone for who and what this convention is for. Previous conventions were usually a show of unity and togetherness designed to bridge the factions of the party and present a unified face to the country ahead of the general election. This conviction is Donald's victory lap. Still waiting on that heifer, Julio. (laughs) Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. To the party that told him he would never win the nomination. To the media who would positive that he would get bored and drop out long before the primaries even began. This convention is only about unity insofar as unity is people lining up behind Donald J. fucking Trump. Apparently, one of those uniters will be the Indiana. Like Indiana. We named the dog Indiana. Governor Mike Pence, who will apparently be Donald J. Trump's running mate for as vice president. Pence, who endorsed Ted Cruz in the primary. Pence, who was a guy who signed the anti-gay religious freedom not to sell pizzas to Icky Gays Act in, in Indiana. Pence, who's facing a very tough re-election campaign. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. No, I'm sure it didn't. Mike Pence will go down in history as the guy who tried to shortcut his way to president by betting on his ticket topper being impeached early in his term. Although that's not a bad bet when you think about it. Bless his heart, Newt. He really, really tried at the last minute to get this nomination. I mean, he wanted a test for Sharia law and we would kick anyone who passed out of the country. Really, Newt? How does that work? I mean, will it be multiple choice, a fill-in-the-blank, or a short essay? He also wanted to make viewing jihadist websites a crime. Hey, hey Newt, I- I've read them too. Are you going to lock me, the white guy, up? Or do I need to say something like Admiral Akbar first? It's a trap! I'm being told that uh, Admiral Akbar is not what Muslims say, and that Admiral Akbar was, in fact, a follower of the Buddha. Apologies to Muslims, Buddhists, and all the Mon Calamari people. On a final note on Pence, maybe, maybe, there were probably Apprentice jokes to be made about it, but I've never actually seen an episode of The Apprentice, and I plan on going to the grave that way. For a hot minute, it looked like the RNC Rules Committee might change the rules governing the binding of the delegates at the convention and open them up to vote for whomever they pleased. All I did 
All I have ever done has been in the best interest of all of us. Are you insane? The Rules Committee is a group of delegates who travel down to the convention early and then decide what rules the convention will follow for nominating a candidate and various other boring parts of... I don't know, whatever it is they do. You might have known people like this in high school. They they got their hands on a copy of Robert's Rules of Order, and instead of using it to de-seed their pot like most right-thinking Americans, they actually read the fucking thing. Why? You have no faith in the essential decency of the white man's culture. I mean, these are the kind of people who thought it was a party game to hold mock debates. Look, I'm not telling you what to be into, but if your idea of a good time at a party involves a motion to table the issue on whether or not to order pizza, I'm just saying it's not my idea of fun. So unless you're taking nominations for who's lighting the 11th bong load of the night, that could be fun. Otherwise, no. No. But the Rules Committee voted on whether or not delegates currently bound to vote for a specific candidate were free to vote their conscience rather than the person that their state required them to be pledged towards. This would have been... It's amazing how quickly things can go from bad to total shitstorm. All they needed were 28 votes on the Rules Committee to bring the issue to a floor for a delegate vote. The delegates, no matter who they were bound to, are free to vote on any rules change brought before them in any way they see fit. In short, this change would have meant Trump went from being the presumptive nominee to being a really embarrassing guy who showed up at the party, took a shit in the punch bowl, and then hit on everyone's wives. You! You! You have worn out your welcome at Bushwood, sir. Sadly, Trump's little game of announcing Pence before the meeting had its intended effect on the committee, and they got 11 votes. So there went the last best hope to start the orange menace. It died right on the floor. After all, the best way for a populist demagogue ass nugget to thrive is that good men, or as near as you can find to a good anything at a GOP convention, do nothing. And the GOP does nothing better than anyone. You know, party conventions were once a place where the rubber met the road, and now they're a place for the rubbers to meet the trash can, except with the aforementioned barebackers. The hookers were paid, the minibar contents were quietly swept into a fat guy from Duluth's luggage before heading home, and that was it. Nothing happens there that matters, and the incredible amounts of money were wasted on the pointless shows could have been better spent directly paying the hookers and then buying Chick-fil-A for everyone in America. It is the GOP, and God, those sandwiches are fucking delicious. This year is perhaps the most interesting convention in decades, and certainly there's going to be more drama than any year in the past 40 years, where the only drama is balloons. Balloons, bring them, balloons, balloons, balloons. No matter what happens, this will be the year the grand old party never forgets. Best case scenario for all of this is Trump loses and loses badly, the Senate changes hands, and the House margin shrinks. Worst case scenario, Trump wins, and four years from now, the convention consists of people just picking through radioactive scraps of garbage, hoping to find a bag of mini bar peanuts that survived the blast. Either way, it's going to be one hell of a show. And speaking of shows, that is it for ours this week. It is so good to be back to just bashing Trump and saying mean things about Republicans. It's the whole reason I have a podcast in the first place, just to be utterly nasty to people I disagree with. If you would like the chance to personally insult large portions of the electorate, you can begin by leaving us a ratings and review on iTunes or Stitcher. It helps like-minded people find us and narrow-minded people send Gavin death threats. It's a win-win, really. You could follow the show on Twitter at the hell underscore podcast or the show name on Facebook and SoundCloud. And all of the episodes are, of course, on www.whatthehellpodcast.com. For me, your humble host, Dave Bledsoe, producer Gavin, Raslin, Caramon, Tika, Tass, Sturm, Flint, and Tannis. I want to say to all of you convention goers that we've got our flag pins on, our guns in our hand. Lord, it's hard to be a delegate man. We've got Dells voting for Trump and Dells voting for Cruz. Dells who don't care because anyway, we'll probably lose. But we got to get ready, make everything right, because all of my Republican friends are coming over tonight. See you next week.
you're coming over tonight. 